Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to add more fans to your PC when you've got limited fan headers or if you just want to tidy up your wiring, and it's only going to cost you about £7. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to add more fans to your PC. Now, if you're like me and, uh, well, you like your PC fans, kind of like that in the background, you may find that your motherboard may be limited on actual fan headers, which can be a bit of a problem. So either you have loads of splitters and all kinds of ugly stuff going on, or wires strapped all across your motherboard to try and make everything get connected. Now this is a really cool little device from Deepcool. They haven't sponsored this video in any way. I actually bought this off of Amazon, and I'll actually put the links for this in the video description so you can pick it up in your local area. But this is actually gonna solve a lot of problems. So this is the FH04, and as you can probably guess from the part number, it's fan header 04. It's got four fan headers on there, which effectively will convert a single fan header on your motherboard into four usable fan headers. Now this supports both three pin and four pin fans, which is absolutely brilliant, which is actually something which was lacking in their FH10, which was a SATA powered PWM controller for up to 10 fans. Now a lot of people watch that video and were saying, can I use three pin fans, etc., etc. And unfortunately, no, you can't. Three pin fans and four pin fans work in pretty much different ways. One of them uses PWM control to control the fan speeds, and the other one uses voltage, and generally the two aren't really cross-compatible. So today we're gonna to take a little look at this, uh, show you what it's all about, and obviously my recommendations. But realistically, for most people, if you're building a system and you are struggling with fans, then this is gonna be a godsend, and again, it only costs well, less than 10 pounds here in the UK. So taking a closer look at the device itself, and as you can see, there's not a great deal to it. Essentially, you have a four pin PWM connection there on one end. You have a roughly about 20 inch cable, which then terminates into this little mini fan hub. Now you don't need to separately power it or anything. It is all getting power from the four pin header or three pin, depending on your setup. And you don't have to worry about, are the fans gonna overload the header, etc. Generally, this has been designed so that those kind of things have been taken out of the equation. Realistically, for most people, three or four fans on a single fan header is gonna be absolutely fine. But I would suggest just in the kind of sake of stability and also security for your system and so you don't overload the headers, do take a look at your fans. If you have a look at the back of your fan, normally there'll be a sticker on the back telling you the wattage or the amperage. And if you look at your motherboard manual, look at the individual fan headers and they will tell you what they can actually support. Most fan headers will be either one amp, two amp, or possibly if it's a combo pump fan header, it could be anything up to three amps. So do check your motherboard and do check your fans before you go ahead and actually order one of these devices. But realistically, for most people, I think you're gonna be absolutely fine. So looking at the actual hub itself, as you can see on the backside, there is a piece of 3M tape. So you just peel off that and you can stick it into the back of your case somewhere. Now, obviously you don't have to stick it down if you don't want to, but for some people to actually make it nice and neat in the back of your PC case, sticking it in a certain position may be beneficial. Now, obviously you can stick it pretty much where you want. Being that you've got this really nice long cable, you could plug this into one of the fan headers and due to the length of it, you could probably put it pretty much wherever you want to. Now for me particularly, I'm gonna be using this with my Neutron Labs case, which comes with a fan controller, but it's one of those static fan controllers, so the fans always spin at a constant RPM, which can be a little bit annoying. I have at the moment wired all the fans individually to different fan headers across the motherboard using some splitters and things like that, which is okay, but it's a little bit of a pain in the backside. Also, I do have to make sure that all the fans are individually controlled in the MSI sensor, which you can see how I did that in the video up here but it can be a pain. So some of the fans are spinning just slightly faster than others. So yeah, it's not ideal. And I do want all the fans to be the same speed. Now that is one of the things of this, which I should get across. This is a hub and it is basically a duplicator. So whatever the signal is going into this part is gonna be replicated four times into this part. So you don't have individual fan control. And when you look in your BIOS, this will still show up as a single fan. It will not show up as four individual fans. So I just wanted to make that clear. When we look at the actual hub itself, you'll notice that one of the headers is actually color coded white. And actually on the top, it does say fan one, fan two, fan three, fan four, etc. Now fan one is gonna be the one which is actually gonna report its status into the BIOS. So ideally you wanna have all of your fans, well, pretty much matched. They don't have to be exactly the same, but they do have to be either all three pin or all four pin fans. So please don't use this as a combination unit, plugging a couple of three pins and a couple of four pins in, because you won't get the results that you're expecting. 
Another thing that's worth mentioning as well, when you do actually plug this in, if you are using three pin fans across the entire stretch there, now again, you don't have to use all four at once if you don't want to. If maybe you've just got three fans at the front of your PC and you want to control three fans, then just plug in fan one, fan two, fan three, and you can use those as they are. You don't have to worry about the additional connector. And conversely, if you want to start off with... So for what seems to be a very simple device, I've probably elaborated way too much on this. So for those of you that are interested and you want to pick one up, and this is pretty much all the information you need to know, then you can go ahead, stop this video now, click on the links in the video description, and you can pick up one of these from your local supplier. But for those of you who want to see how it actually works and how I've put it into a case, carry on watching. Okay, so this is the, uh, the inside of my PC, and we're just going to point out why the wiring at the moment is a little bit more messy than it would normally be or could be. So in the moment, as you can see in this top corner here, there are two fans being plugged in. So these are three pin coming from these fans which are mounted up front, which uh, hopefully you can see there. So you've got three fans in the front. There's also a single fan in the rear. Now the single fan I've actually wired up to a fan header on the motherboard itself, which is kind of tucked away right in there. So it is a little bit of a pain to get to, but there was, I think as well, if I look at the bottom, if I zoom in a little bit there, you can probably just about see there is a uh, another fan tucked in down here somewhere. So yeah, basically we've got the three fans plugged in into individual headers. Now I'm lucky on this particular board, this is the MSI B550 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. It's got loads of fan headers, but if you've only got maybe one or two fan headers, this is where this little device is going to come in extremely handy. So let's spin the PC round and we'll take a look at the back and you can see what the current hub looks like. So as you can see in the back here, this is the Neutron Labs case and the built-in hub, which you can see just there in the middle of the shot there. So let's zoom in. So you can see it is a three pin setup. So there's four three pin outputs, but sadly on this one, there isn't actually a way to control them. It is a static speed. Probably can get other devices similar to this, which actually have PWM control. I think probably at some point it was envisaged there is another connector up there, but it isn't connected. And as you can see, the fans aren't connected either at the moment, so it is a little bit of a mess. We've got all these wires streaming around everywhere, some of them for the RGB, but mostly for the fans, etc. So we've got them all coming through here. So the plan is what I'm gonna do is, obviously we're gonna disregard this to some extent. We're still gonna use that for controlling the addressable RGB, but we're actually gonna take all the fan wire in from these headers, which are up the top here, and one down the bottom, etc. And we're gonna put the little fan hub in somewhere, probably in a similar sort of position, maybe a little bit lower, or maybe even actually somewhere around here, just so that we can put it in somewhere nice, keep all the wiring to a minimum. So anyway, that is the kind of intro to the case, and again, you see from the front, so there are these three fans. They're actually not too bad little fans, but being that they're statically controlled, it's a little bit of a pain in the backside if we're using the hub, which is included in the back there. So anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, so I've unplugged the uh, the fan headers from the motherboard, as you can see. So we've got this bunch of three, which is coming from this front section. So we've got one at the bottom, one in the middle, one in the top. And I've also unplugged the rear one as well. So we have, in fact, got four PWM, well, actually, these are three volt DC controller fans. So this is actually quite, uh, quite a good example. So we're using three pin connectors, and then we're gonna connect it to the motherboard using the four pin, but we're gonna tell the motherboard that it's using a three pin, not four pin. Hopefully that makes sense. So next thing to do is to work out where we're going to put it. So ideally, I guess, somewhere around here would be uh, absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is peel off the sticky bit off the back, revealing the self-adhesive. Uh, I think I'm just going to put it just there, which is probably not straight, but I guess for this particular instance, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. So all we need to do is to plug in our fans. Now, I'm going to plug in all four fans. So I'm going to start with fan three for the, uh, the top one there. And as we take out the one from the middle, fan number two. And the one that's in the bottom, we're going to call that fan number one. So this is the one which the motherboard is actually going to be sensing and then distributing that same signal across the rest of them. So the last fan header here at the top, I can plug into this top connection here, fan number four. And there we go. That is all our fans plugged in. So now what I need to do is to route this cable through to the inside and connect this to a suitable fan header somewhere nearby. Now obviously I can cable manage this up a little bit after, so let's uh, find a nice place. I might take it underneath and down into one of the lower fan headers just to keep this top section a little bit more clear. I'm going to have a look now and see where it works out best for me. Okay, so there is the, uh, the finished project. It's not entirely neat, uh, but it'll do. So 
that hasn't been cable tied up yet but we'll do that a little bit later so we've got the hub there as you can see and we've got our connections in there cable tied up some of the wire in there i wouldn't say it's necessarily neater but for me personally for actually controlling the uh, the fan speeds it's going to be a lot lot easier the single fan header has gone down to the bottom then up to there and then is in fan header number three so let's go over to the computer now and we'll take a look at the BIOS, set up the BIOS correctly for this particular hub and then I'll show you actually in the MSI Center to see how we control the fans. Okay, so there we are, we're back in the BIOS. This is our MSI Click BIOS, so what we'll do is go into Hardware Monitor and as you can see at the moment, System Fan 3 is reporting a TACO speed. So let's go into System Fan 3. Now as you can see, I've already set it to DC because that's what the fans were previously. If I set it to PWM, You'll notice the RPM shoots straight up because it isn't that sort of fan, so it'll just go to the full speed that it can do, which is around about 1100 RPM. So we're going to switch that to DC. Now, obviously, depending on what sort of fans you're using, if you're using all three pin fans, you want to choose DC in this section. If you're using four pin PWM fans, you want to set it to PWM. And obviously, your motherboard may be slightly different. If it is, feel free to let me know in the Discord chat or in the video comments. We'll try and help you out as best we can. But this is very important, go into your BIOS and make sure that the actual header that you're using is set up correctly. Once you've done that, you can X out, save the settings and reboot into Windows. And that is essentially gonna be it. Okay, so for those of you that are doing this in your Windows software, this is MSI Center. So if we go into features and we'll go into user scenario and then we can go into the fan mode, which is here. So you can choose if you want to the individual profiles, but we're gonna click on customize and then as you can see, all of our fan headers, CPU fan headers registering, all the others are zero RPM apart from system fan three. So for those of you, if you've only got a single fan header, this is essentially what you're gonna be looking for. So we'll click on the cog, and again, we can make settings here. We know that it's actually in the right mode. You can, if you want to, click on fan tune, and that will detect the high and low points of the fan settings. But I'm actually gonna leave it pretty much like this, maybe, uh, I do have a normal kind of thing where I like to do 40 at 40, 50 at 50, 60 at 60, and then 100% at 70 degrees. That is my kind of preferable curve for this system, which gives me the balance between noise and performance. So that's it from the software. It all seems to work well, and all the fans are being controlled, and they're all at the same speed, which is absolutely brilliant. So there you go, nice and easy to do. Uh, I've showed you the long way round. Obviously, if you want to, you could just take the first few minutes out of this video and you basically get the whole idea of how this works. So if you want to pick one up, this is the FH04. Links will be in the video description. But yeah, very handy. If you're a bit of a PC tinkerer, I would suggest getting a couple of these and just leaving them in your toolbox. Very handy, very useful. If you're someone who's got a slightly older motherboard, like an A320 or a slightly cheaper B450 board, that kind of thing, or maybe an old Intel board, you've only got one, maybe two fan headers and you want to put a ton of fans in your new PC case, etc., which you may have got at Christmas, that kind of thing. Yeah, this is going to be worth its weight in gold. For the seven pounds that I paid, well, 15 pounds across the two of them, I think this is absolutely brilliant. So if you want to add more fans to your PC, definitely pick one of these up. But let me know what you think about the video in the comments section below. We've got more videos coming up like this in the future, so if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button and the channel icon, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.